Hello, it is Friday, November 12th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Friday puzzle today. We've had some really fun themes this week, so I'm sort of looking forward, actually, to the contrast of a good, solid, hopefully a good, solid, themeless puzzle today for Friday, the first themeless day of the week, the first of two, Friday and Saturday. Hope you're looking forward to it as well. I'm going to do quite an abbreviated version of my typical uh, preamble today because there are a number of comments from yesterday's puzzle, which was a tricky puzzle, so I'm not surprised that there are a number of comments. I'll quickly mention the new Twitter account, at The Daily Solve, if you want to see um, tweets about this series each day. And the um, why don't today I mention the Discord chat server, uh, which you can find in a link in the description field underneath each video, and there you can chat about the New York Times crossword, about other crosswords, about crosswords people have constructed in the Discord chat server, and about other puzzles generally. There was um, a member of the chat server who was on The Chase, which if you're in the UK, that's a, that's a well-known uh, game show over here. So that was sort of fun to uh, read about his experiences. Anyway, you can find a link to that chat Discord server in the description field underneath the video. Uh, and then there's the Patreon, of course, patreon.com slash daily solve. And I'll leave it at that for now. Also a link there in the description field. So let's get on to the comments from yesterday's video. Charles Martinez explains, well, not so much explains, but confirms that telecon, uh, a contraction of teleconference about which I was a bit skeptical, Charles Martinez confirms that it does indeed mean tele telephone conference, and as a manager, I had one every day with district managers over performance. We indeed call it called it our daily telecon. George Adams echoes that, says, I've also seen it used to mean telephone conversation between a manager and an individual subordinate. So there you go, telephone conversation or conference, and people have used both. So that, sh that shows me. Michael H., explains that Super G, an event whose name wasn't particularly familiar to me, is a skiing discipline short for Super Giant Slalom. Sl blah, slalom sorry. The races are faster than a giant slalom, but more technical than a downhill race. I think it was introduced to even out the playing field between technical and speed competitions. Very interesting. And <laughs> Richard Lorenzen, as well as several other people, I'm just crediting the first person I happen to see, informed me that STEM, very obviously, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Engineering was the one I couldn't quite bring to mind for some reason. And Kirby Evans uh, explains that the prevailing wisdom on the etymology of the phrase pup tent seems to be that a tendency, seems to be the tendency to associate a soldier's life with that of a dog, thus the phrase dog tags. However, though this sounds vaguely believable, it seems it remains something of an etymological mystery. Kirby Evans also points out very astutely that, for instance, frozen chicken doesn't doesn't change state when it thaws. When it thaws, there was that thaw clue, thaw answer yesterday, and I kept thinking about water changing states and thinking, but it doesn't. You know, I suppose anytime water thaws, it does change state, um, but it doesn't have to. Not everything that thaws changes states, as Kirby Evans points out. And Sam Morris, this is. This is fascinating. Sam Morris says, when you called it outrageous that the Great Wall of China's length in miles might be 5,164, I became curious how long it actually is. Turns out that would be outrageously small in comparison because it's not 5,164 miles long. It's actually 13,171. I guess that's why they call it great. Yes, this is, that is unbelievable. So I, I also researched this a bit after the puzzle and it turns out that there's been a recent, um, Serve a, a recent new survey of the length of the Great Wall by um, some uh, Chinese agency that, that 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 researches such things, and the previous estimate of the length of the Great Wall actually was around that five thousand mile mark. It was about uh, eight thousand eight hundred fifty kilometers, or about fifty five hundred miles. But the new estimate declares it to be a total of twenty one thousand one hundred ninety six, or thirteen thousand miles which is unbelievable i don't i don't know entirely what that means because i know that vast sections of the wall are in disrepair so do you count the collapsed bits i'm sure you do um but i wonder how there could be such a great discrepancy between the previous and current 
estimates because the the <laughs> the new estimate is two and a half times the old one. So that does seem pretty significant. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, Ronald Bryan says Cash Cab, a uh, quiz show, I guess, with which I was unaware, was the first clue I filled in. It was a show where the cash cab would pick people up trying to get a taxi in New York, and in the time they had to get to their destination, they participated in a quiz with the driver and would win money depending on how many questions they could answer. Three wrong answers, and they lose and would have to find another ride the rest of the way. What? I've watched maybe a handful of episodes, but it stuck with me. And apparently the show is, in theory, still still going, although it stopped during COVID, obviously. Well, not obviously, but it did. Kathy Swope also, finally, I think this is the last one, uh, gives some context around Nadia Comaneci, says, In 1976, at the age of 14, Nadia Comaneci was the first gymnast to be awarded a perfect score of 10.0 at the Olympic Games. And then she also explains that cartwheel hats, popular in the early 1900s, have broad, saucer-shaped brims and shallow crowns, usually worn slightly slanted, thus giving the appearance of doing a cartwheel on the wearer's head. There you go. I didn't have any, any clue about that. Boy, that was a that was quite an education there. Yesterday, as I said yesterday, that Thursday puzzle was one of the trickiest puzzles, one of the trickiest New York Times puzzles anyway, I've solved in weeks. So it's not surprising that there was plenty of knowledge for me to be gained. So thanks to everyone who, who wrote in. I'm sorry if I missed your comment. Uh, okay, so let's move right on to Friday's puzzle. This is a crossword constructed by Patrick John Duggan and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It's a nice little Nice looking, pleasant radial symmetry in this puzzle. Let's get going. San Francisco or Fire Island? Um, I'm guessing, oh, I was gonna say Peninsula, but maybe not. Um, so what is it? A hiker's handful? I think, a boy, my, I just noticed my lighting is very dramatic and high contrast today. I wonder what's going on with that. I'm very, um, Pushed, the colors are very pushed to the extremes. Anyway, hiker's handful. I think gorp is another phrase for trail mix. And I think there are a number of folk etymologies of gorp that attempt to turn it into an acronym, but I'm not sure any of them are, are actually known to be accurate. Anyway, San Francisco or Fire Island. What is each of these things? A brutish boss could be an overlord. An orthodontist's recommendation. Orthodontist recommendation. So an orthodontist installs braces and other corrective hardware. I'm not sure. A retainer. A retainer. What you would wear after having a treatment with braces in order to retain the um, new positioning of one's teeth. So to not take for granted to parse? I don't think so. To swear would be to aver, to state an opinion. Monsters, Inc. character who loves snow cones. I don't know. Beth, perhaps, that would fit in this cross, but I just don't know. Jason with the 2008 hit, I'm Yours. So I don't know this artist particularly well, but I do remember Jason Mraz being around, and I, I think I remember him because of his distinctive name that would fit in these crosses here. Ah, so to not take something for granted is to prize it. There we go. That's that's straightforward. So, <laughs> Monsters and Character, clearly not Beth. San Francisco or Fire Island? I lived in San Francisco most of my life. It's strange that I don't... Oh, a gay mecca, I suppose. So, um, the Castro neighborhood in San Francisco is... Um, probably one of the neighborhoods that um, sort of defined the notion of a gay mecca, I would think, in the modern era. Um, also, it's got a really great, beautiful old uh, movie palace, the uh, the Castro Theater, which is one of my absolute favorite interiors in the world. Okay, Architect Saarinen. Oh. So I'm familiar with, I think, Eero or Eero Sar Saarinen, but that doesn't fit here. Could this be this person's son, perhaps? Ellie? I don't know. Entered quietly could be crept in. Purposeless could be adrift. A unit equivalent to one-sixth of an inch. 
So it's not a pika or a pika. Um, is it something else that starts with PIC? I think it might be, but I'm not sure. Arcade game feature. What would an arcade game feature? Coin? I don't, uh, it doesn't seem very plausible. Throw or shoot? Opt for? No. Something for, perhaps? I'm thinking metaphorically, you sort of throw or shoot. Those are sort of going for something. Uh, what about this? Serving with shawarma. Ah, pita, pita bread. And let's um, let's continue on ordinarily with the acrosses, and we'll get back to that troublesome segment there. To lift one's spirits. So there's a question mark, which is our pun or wordplay indicator. Um, could this be something about a seance, perhaps, or lift one's spirits? I'm, I'm thinking what the... Oh, maybe spirits to mean alcohol. I don't know if the if the pun is around lift or spirits or possibly both. Um, toast. If you lift, raise your glass, literally lift your spirits. I'm not sure. Let's keep going. Unnatural, eerie or unearthly or weird. A lengthy Twitter post often. A, a, I was going to say a tirade, but I think of a tirade as not being an individual lengthy Twitter post, but rather a series of Twitter posts, so a lengthy thread of Twitter posts. So what is a lengthy Twitter post itself? I'm not really sure. Hospital diagnostic, it could be an EKG or an ECG, which I now know, thanks to the crossword, is actually the same thing. Electrocardiogram, I think. But it could also be an MRI, or I think a CAT scan. It could be quite a few things. Uh, ah, but this will help. Bauer of Leisure Apparel. Eddie Bauer, I recognize. So that makes the hospital diagnostic probably an MRI. There we go. And an imitation would be an ape or a meme. I don't think that quite fits. Um, I don't know. Probably should be obvious. Primed for. So when we have this for, as a parenthetical, what that means is that the answer and the clue match more closely when each of them is appended with for. So whatever this answer is, you would say that for to mean the same thing as primed for, so set for, but that doesn't fit obviously, or ready for, that sort of thing. But I don't see what it is yet. Shrimp in a shell, maybe. Shrimp in a shell, maybe. I'm not sure. Interminably. So, interminably something that goes on and on and on, like these videos sometimes do, <laughs> interminably. Um, could end with on. A miniaturist's supply. So, a miniaturist, someone who, I think, paints very small paintings or sculpts very small sculptures or paints very small sculptures, for that matter. Um, I don't know. I feel as though there's a lot going on in this area that should be much more straightforward and graspable than I happen to be making it, which is sort of irritating. A tusked beast, tusked beast might be a warthog. Let's try that and see if it helps with some crosses. A heroic es exploit could be uh, a jest from, from French. And I think probably where we get gesture in English, I would imagine. Um, but a, a feat, beau geste, for instance, in French. Home to Mayan ruins like Caracol and Lamanai. I don't know. Hopefully that becomes more apparent with crosses. A countenance. Could be your face. Um... A long way to go could be a trek. And an accompanier of a black eye could be a fat lip, sort of boxing injuries, for instance. Actress Amanda, Amanda Peet is an actress, certainly. Oh, an imitation is a fake, I see. I was thinking of imitation 
as an act, as opposed to imitation as an object. So shame on me for sticking to one sense of a given word. A hotel hummer. What does that mean? Something that hums in a hotel room? A air conditioning unit or something? What would be specific to a hotel room? Machine. Oh, an ice machine. Not a hotel room, but a hotel, usually a floor of a hotel has has, an, has a communal ice machine. Okay. Oh, oh, a lengthy Twitter post often, perhaps a screed. So I'm not crazy about this clue. I mean, one, I don't, the whole nature of Twitter is that even though tweets can now be longer than they were able to be when, twi when Twitter first began, it's still the case that an individual Twitter post cannot be particularly long. And I don't really know if one Twitter post ever quite qualifies as a screed, which is something I think of being, I don't know, more voluminous maybe than you could get in a single Twitter post. I would think of a series of Twitter posts as being a screed, but I, maybe that's, maybe I have an overly narrow view of what a screed is. So maybe that's unfair. Anyway, soft shoes informally. I don't think I saw this clue before. This would be mocks, moccasins, I think. And zero reaction. And here we have a question mark, so some sort of pun. Zero reaction. What does that mean? Lift one's spirits. Oh, imbibe, perhaps. So lift one's glass, imbibe, I suppose. I don't know that that entirely follows. I would think of lift one's spirits as more of a toast, whereas imbibing is actually drinking it. But yeah, maybe. Okay, so imagine a case in which I'd say, perhaps, or if unnatural, maybe not. Unnatural could be forced, so that would be if. And if would be a good, a good start to saying imagine a case in which. So if something is forced, it's not natural. It has to be forced in order to happen rather than happening organically. Ah, and then a zero reaction is burr. That's clever. So zero degrees. It's very cold. And that would apply. I mean, it would that would apply in both Fahrenheit and Celsius. It's still cold. And you'd say burr. And here we have covering for a cold one. Ah, a beer koozie. Um, a little um, foam or cloth. Uh, I don't know what you'd call it. A, an enclosure into which you situate a beer can so that you don't, your hands don't need to be holding the cold thing, I suppose. Uh, actually, with uh, with the Idle Thumbs podcast network that I that I um, co-ran for many years, we manufactured a beer koozie with Jeff Goldblum's face printed on it, and it was we called it the Cold Bloom. And I was once able to give one to Jeff Goldblum it personally. And he was delighted by it and situated it on top of the piano that he was playing for the jazz set that uh, that I was attending, which is how we were able to meet him. So anyway, that's my that's my story about beer koozies. Uh, was having manufactured one of Jeff Goldblum's face on it and handing it to him. Anyway, um, home to Mayan ruins like Caracol and Lamanai. Is that Belize? And then uh, countenance abide. Oh, yes, of course, because it's countenance as a verb, not as a noun. Again, I was trapped in a particular um, trapped in a particular sense of the word. So one's countenance, one's sort of the the uh, expression on one's face, but but to countenance something is to abide it, to handle it, to uh, accept it, I suppose, in a way. And then here we have spare clothes, which are bikinis. Ah, clever. So we have the question mark indicator and spare meaning scant, it, it, that meaning of spare, not, not a lot of it. So bikinis, spare clothes, succinct, if nothing else, and troubadour could be a bard, someone who regales with song. One who will manage somehow. Well, sorry, ones, I'm sorry, ones will manage somehow, so plural. And there's a question mark, so yet another pun or bit of wordplay. And what do we have here? Changes could be amends, the verb rather than the noun 
changes, as in more than one change, but rather uh, changes at something, amends at something, I suspect. And subscripts on Scrabble tiles. So what are the subscripts on Scrabble tiles? The point values, I suppose, of the numbers, but it says subscripts on Scrabble tiles, so it's plural. Number would fit. There's something else that's a subscript on a Scrabble tile? Am I missing a reason why number singular would work here? I mean, I suppose... I don't know, that doesn't seem great. BRB, it doesn't, yeah, I don't think it's number. Uh, I'm not sure, let's keep looking. C for one. I mean, C could be a grade, it could be a musical note. Um, it could be an element in the periodic table, I guess, carbon. Um, could be the speed of light. No, that's a lowercase c. What else is c? I'm sure it's sure. the other, whatever the other thing is, the obvious one I'm not thinking of. Here we have international cricket matches. Oh, that would be tests, wouldn't it? Test cricket test match. So maybe changes isn't amends. Sorry about that. I'll jump to conclusions there. So changes, alters. Ah, it's still the verb meaning whereas the noun would be alterations. Um, so now, oh, so subscripts on Scrabble tiles, yes, okay. So it is point values. In this case, it's just the word values for point values. Ah, and that makes this easier. Succinct, if nothing else, would be brusque, um, often a slightly pejorative determination, hence, I guess, the if nothing else. So the, le the least you can say is, or the most you can say maybe that this thing is quite brusque. Okay, focus of the 2009 Lilly Ledbetter Act um, is a, a gender equality thing, right? So does that, yes, equality fits. And to prepare on short notice, run, run something, I'm guessing. Does that help here? 2006, sorry, my microphone's in the way, so I have to crane my head. 2026 FIFA World Cup co-host. Um, maybe, maybe. You, maybe N is wrong. Is it the United Arab Emirates, maybe? I don't remember. Prepare on short... Uh, maybe not. I'm not sure. Is it USA? Oh, maybe it is. Prepare on short notice. Rush out or... Uh, rush. So if this were USA, hunter of fish, a sea eagle, maybe? Does it? Yeah, sea eagle hunts fish. Does that... What is... No, I don't know. I don't know about any of this. Let's destroy it all. So, to be found not guilty, not guilty, shockingly. To to be found. Oh, oh, Lily Ledbetter Act, equal pay, actually. I think equality is too vague. I think this was an equal pay act, actually. And then a video file format could be MPEG, as, as I know well, uh, working on this video series and learning a lot about encoding videos. Name of six popes, including one in the 20th century. Um, pope six, there are six of them. Oh, it should be, uh, it's killing me that I can't get there. Info described on a Tinder profile. Um, so Tinder's a dating app. So what sort of things would you, well, or maybe dating loosely described as a dating app, but you know what I mean? Um, eyes? I don't know. I don't know. Um, what would you normally have? Age, obviously. Um, I don't know. What else? Um, hunter of fish. Oh, so this does actually look like sea eagle with that MPEG there. Um, name of six popes. Why can't I see this? Oh, Paul. Paul. Right? And then neat and clean. Maybe not Paul?
To be found not guilty, shockingly. Boy, I'm sort of hitting a wall here suddenly. They're making fairly consistent pro progress. Civil rights activist Baker, Ella Baker. So, neat and clean. Sorry, I don't know what I'm not seeing in this area. To prepare on short notice. This must be USA, right? And this, how could this not be Rush? But this doesn't look like anything. Um, I'm really struggling, and I'm not entirely sure why, because none of these things seem as though they should be all that difficult, really. I think I'm going to come back to it. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to just sit there for ages not doing anything. Where to fill a flask with alcohol? A, a tap, perhaps? Although, the kinds of things you put in a flask wouldn't really come from a tap. I mean, beer comes from a tap. Not so much spirits, at least not when you'd fill it with a flask, right? I wouldn't think. Um, ba -ba -ba. Although, I suppose, I suppose it wouldn't necessarily have to be a drinking flask. It could be... Um, there's sort of scientific laboratory um, vessels that are flasks. I remember that from chemistry in, in high school. So it could be a lab, a laboratory, and a Greek I lo sorry Greek locale. Oh, although it is an island, once described as the island of overmastering passions. I suspect this to be Lesbos, and then puzzles could be vexes. If something puzzles you, it vexes you. And a heartburn reliever probably will be some sort of brand name medicine with that X at the end. And a rumpus could be a to-do, I suppose. A dot com whose name is styled with an asterisk. Oh, I think um, E-Trade, the online investment uh, website or service or what have you. So here we have Leviticus calls it unclean and not fit for consumption. Um... Camel? I'm not sure. I'm just trying to think of... Uh, it's a meat, I assume. I think it would probably be a meat. And I'm trying to think what could fit in these cells. And I'm going to try camel because that looks like it would be plausible. So C for one, right? What is this? It's also a Roman numeral. I didn't think of that one before, but that doesn't seem to help. It would mean 100. Um, here we have cherry pick... I don't know. Um, a young stud is not a foal, a colt, perhaps. And by blank of, due to, by dint of, by due to, as a result of something. And interminably, so this does look like it's something on, I think. It went on interminably. It went on, oh, maybe not. This current video is droning on interminably. This current video is droning on at no, 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 I was going to say at no end, but that's not true. It's progressing interminably. It's progressing on and on. Yes, okay. Miniaturists supply. There's some sense of miniaturist I'm not quite seeing. I don't, I'm not really sure. 2018 film for which Alfonso Cuaron won Best Director. Oh, Roma. Or Rome, Roma? I really liked that film, I have to say. I was lucky to see it in theaters, even though it was a Netflix film, and it was really great on the big screen. Okay, Prime Oh, Prime 4 could be ripe for, ready for, ripe for. And commit to a course could be to enroll in that course. Off the mark could be inaccurate, something I clearly have been numerous times in that southeastern corner. And a movie series set inside a simulated reality with the, that's clearly the Matrix. And then, oh, I prematurely put an S here. Why did I put an S here? That was very silly. That threw me off for quite a while. The miniature supply is clearly epoxy, which is a very, um, very strong adhesive substance that you could use to... to 
fasten little bits of miniature of miniature together, I suppose. So to throw or shoot, throw or shoot, sent for? A... Oh, to let fly, to throw, you know, like a basketball or anything, any missile that you, that you hurl, you let it fly. There we go. And imagine a case in which, uh, if, say, this answer were let fly, it would allow us to fill nine down in with if, say. And, oh, okay, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, here's an example of a bit of inaccurate reading, really sabotaging my solving for no reason whatsoever. I was right when I said pika. I guessed that a pika, well, not guessed, I was pretty certain that a pika was this unit, but I said it must not be that because that's not enough letters, but I didn't notice that it's units equivalent to one-sixth of an inch, not unit equivalent to one-sixth of an inch. So I should have been able to fill that in immediately. And that makes the arcade game, oops, that makes the arcade game feature a claw, right? Sort of claw games in the arcade, so that all works. So here we have copper containers. And there's the question mark indicator. So there's a pun or a wordplay. I, I suspect this is referring to police, coppers, cops. So it looks like a patrol, patrol cars. And so let's see what that all filled in. Oh, many, I never looked at this clue. Many a bill's name in Congress, indeed in the US, is an acronym. Actually, here in the UK, they, um, the parliamentary uh, rules don't allow the sort of promotional titling of legal acts the way that happens in the United States with things like the Patriot Act, where Patriot actually stands for some incredibly long sentence, especially, but it's, you know, it's used basically as a marketing tool for legislation. And they actually don't allow that in the UK. And um, I've heard MPs expressly say they want to avoid the kind of American style um, marketing based names of bills. Okay. Um, Oh, cherry, to cherry pick is to cull. So you cherry pick by, you know, only taking a few key things from something and culling the rest. And then C for one is an arc. So what is that arc? I actually don't, I actually don't really know what that is. Is that some sort of mathematical or physical concept or something? I'll, I don't know. Oh, and then here we have Maalox, the heartburn reliever. I think I sort of recognize that. And Leviticus, right, it was indeed camel meat that is unclean and not fit for consumption. Um, I think everything else was, was known in there. Okay, so to be found not guilty, shockingly. Is there another country that this could be? What am I not seeing here? Maybe... I really apologize if you if you are um, way ahead of me here. I wouldn't at all be surprised if many of you are e yelling madly about this. To prepare on short notice. Notice. To be found not guilty, shockingly. Well, neat and clean could be kempt. In contrast to unkempt. That, would, that M would work there. And then let's see, that would allow name of six popes to be Paul and info described on a Tinder profile. Is it type? I guess. Um, prepare on short notice. Oh, rustle up to like a meal. I'll, I'll rustle up a meal or something like that. And so to be found not guilty is to skate. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I know, why did I never fill in Ella Baker? That's weird. And then, yeah, there we go. There's the Friday puzzle. Okay. I think that was a very good puzzle. Um, I think it was a very good puzzle, and I just sort of, uh, I stumbled throughout. But I don't really mind stumbling a bit, especially on Friday and Saturday puzzles. I do think that's part of the point of these puzzles, is to throw up that kind of ongoing resistance. I mean, I think I made pretty solid progress marching through the puzzle most of the time, but there were cases uh, there were cases in which I um, I really did hit a bit of a wall, most significantly down here. And what was it really that did it? I think rustle up seeming like it should be rush with prepare on short notice. That, I mean, this is 
clever. This is clever, Phil, because it really does invite. It really does invite the expectation of rush at the beginning of preparing short notice. But Russell Up is a completely plausible, fair, and accurate fill for prepare on short notice. So um, that I think that was the single biggest thing in this area that really threw me off. So well played, Patrick John Duggan. You got me over there. And um, it's funny because, oh, and, and skate. I suppose that cross with skate was tough. That wasn't something that I would have immediately jumped to. I probably even would have thought skate by before skate. But I do think when imagining legal dramas and things like that, you do hear people say things like, oh, he skated on this or whatever. Um, so I think that's fair. Uh, it just isn't, isn't particularly in my linguistic wheelhouse, I suppose. And then over here, this, uh, I guess it was both of these corners. I don't, my mouse isn't responding. I don't know if you can see, I'm not really seeing any response. Anyway, I'm <laughs> intending to gesture towards the uh, southwestern quadrant of the grid. And um, patrol <laughs> patrol cars for copper containers is very clever. Literally containers that that have cops inside of them. Um, keyboard's working. Uh, many of Bill's name in Congress acronym. That's pretty good. Oh, and... Um, where to fill a flask with alcohol in a lab? I think that's pretty clever because obviously we would all, I think most of us would, unless we're laboratory scientists, probably most of us would jump to filling a drinking flask with a spirit. But no, it's perfectly plausible to fill a scientific flask with some sort of alcohol-based fluid. Um, puzzles, vexes. Yes, I was vexed. I was puzzled often during the solve. Oh, I can see some things we, whose clues we never saw. Oh no, maybe I did see this. Ones who will manage somehow, MBAs. So uh, master in business, master of business administration, people who will become managers often receive MBAs. So I think I maybe saw this clue once and never, never returned to it. Was there anything else that I didn't return to? I don't actually think so. Um, but there we go. I think, I think, oh, and then, yes, Architect Saarinen, Eliel Saarinen, I don't, I'll have to look this up. I think there's a more famous Architect Saarinen who must be a relation of this one, or maybe not, it could be a coincidence, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if they were related. Um, so there we go. A fun puzzle, I thought. Fun puzzle that gave me, I think, the amount of challenge I like in a Friday or Saturday, and not... I mean, I probably it was probably a similar solving time to yesterday's puzzle, but I but I think I found that one more challenging overall for whatever reason. Anyway, I will I will I will wrap this up. Let me know how you found this puzzle, um, especially in these themelesses. Uh, so much of it is a variety of knowledge that it really could strike you anyway. One, I mean, I suppose in a in a Thursday puzzle, a lot of the challenge has to do with how quickly you spot the theme and how much you can make out of that. In a themeless puzzle, a Friday or Saturday, which are intended to be more difficult anyway, I think a lot of it has to do with subject matter. And there were cases where even when I had particular subject knowledge, such as Pika's one-sixth to an inch, I completely flubbed it by not properly interpreting the clue. So yeah, even that can be quite variable depending on how your brain is working or not working on a, on a given day. So let me know how you how you fared. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. I even more, <laughs> even more sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. You must have enjoyed it a reasonable amount by making it this far. And if that's true, why not subscribe to the channel? If you hit the subscribe button or that bell, people are always saying to smash that bell. So consider smashing the bell and you will be notified about these videos when they go up each day. Wouldn't that be nice? And then you could join me for the solve on a daily basis. And um, if you know someone who might enjoy this, who might need some help on the crossword, who might enjoy being exposed to how to solve the crossword, uh, then that's an option as well. Let them know. I would love it. I would appreciate it. I only really have the whole word of mouth phenomenon to spread the word. So everyone who does that is very appreciated by me. Other people who are appreciated by me are people who contribute to the Patreon campaign for a small monthly donation starting at three pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency. You can help directly support this channel and 
allow this series to continue as a sustainable bit of work for myself, for me, I should say. And a uh, number of people have done that. I very much appreciate it. You get enhanced access to that Discord chat server I mentioned at the beginning of this episode. You um, get a whole raft of bonus videos that I, um, I mean, there's, I think I'm averaging a couple of those per week in total. I mean, there's certainly more than one a week at this rate in total. Like, in fact, every week has at least two because there's the um, mini puzzle speed solve and the boss words fall themeless challenge plus the monthly puzzle. So average of slightly over two a week, I suppose. You can get in on all of those. And also, depending on the level at which you contribute, you can get an exclusive mug with a don't check or let's, sorry, a let's check the crosses slogan. And at that level, you also are recognized at the end of these videos. And right now, I am going to recognize over full hitbox, the inestimable hood monster, and the incomparable Shantanu Bhatia. So thank you, over full hitbox. Thank you, hood monster. And thank you, Shantanu, for your generous and ongoing support, keeping this whole thing going. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to everyone else who's backed the Patreon campaign. I appreciate that as well. And thank you to you for watching this entire video of a man solving a New York Times crossword. I hope you do that exact same slightly surprising activity tomorrow when I solve the Saturday puzzle, intended to be the most difficult puzzle of the week. We'll see if it can compete with yesterday's puzzle, which I found pretty tricky. I hope you'll join me to find the answer to that as well. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Uh -huh.